I'm Larry Russell. Today we're going to go over long-term capital gains taxes and discuss actually how they're calculated. This is, uh, this is the first of uh, two videos I intend to do. This is an overview. So let's go to the first one. Here's a, uh, a graphic that shows us actually how these, what the tax brackets are and uh, what the tax rates are. First, I'll point out that this is for married taxpayers filing jointly. Uh, the next slide, I'll show you what it is for single taxpayers, which are the two main uh, categories of filing uh, for, for income taxes. Now, uh, this example assumes that there's no other ordinary income on a tax return. Now, what that means is you don't have any kind of bonuses, salary, or other, other taxes like that. The only thing you have to report is capital gains taxes. Now, the first thing uh, to note here is a, a long-term capital gain, uh, which is this LTCG uh, abbreviation, that's a capital asset that one owns and is held for at least one year. All right, so here you go. The 0% uh, LTCG tax rate applies from $0 up to $75,300. Then from 75,300 for married taxpayers up until 466,950, the tax rate is 15%. And then above this, this, this level, the tax rate goes to 20%. Now this is more advantageous than ordinary income tax rates. But one thing you begin to see right here is the $75,300 uh, uh, level here actually turns out to be the break point between the ordinary income tax rate of 15% and 25%. And note that the, with the numbers we're using here are for 2006. Uh, another thing, a couple other things to note about break points is that they're inflation index and, they, and so they will change from year to year, but the concept behind this is, is, is stable. In addition to that, Note that state income taxes might apply. Some states have them, some states don't. But if indeed you have uh, uh, um, long-term capital gains at the state level, you're going to end up paying ordinary income tax rates for st at, at the state level. So let's move on. Oh, and, and, and another thing that's actually quite important on this thing as well is that um, ordinary income, which we're going to see in examples uh, coming up, uh, are net of deductions and exemptions. So therefore, the higher your deductions, the more exemptions you have, the less ordinary income that will end up uh, getting uh, getting reported and taxed. So now here we jump to single taxpayers. So the 0% bracket or for a single taxpayer is 0 to 37,650. Uh, Again, the break point for single taxpayers from 15 to 25%. And then and if you know, if you recall, it was seventy five thousand three hundred dollars was what the married was. So that's you know roughly you know half as much as the break point. But up here, you notice that the and by the way, so the range is from here up to here is for the fifteen percent tax rate. At at four hundred fifteen thousand fifty dollars, then it jumps up to a twenty percent uh, a long term capital gains tax rate. And the notes are the same here. Now here's the thing that uh, confuses a lot of people is that while we have advantageous uh, long-term capital gains tax rates, there's a link between the long-term capital gains tax regime and that of ordinary income. So the previous two slides I gave the example of, and I'll just click back, indicating that there was no ordinary income. It was zero. In this case, we're looking at $50,000 worth of ordinary income. So with ordinary income, and that's something like wages, salaries, uh, that's taken into account first. So if you look at this thing here and just look at this blue line here, the, the, the ordinary income kind of acts like a plunger to push up um, the taxation rates on your, your long-term capital gains. So in this case, we start out with 50000 and then we add $100,000 taxable long-term capital gain on top of that. So the way the actual tax rates work is that if you had 50000 worth of taxable ordinary income, it will consume some of this tax bracket. And 
So if you look up here at these numbers right here, this is the first break point, minus 50,000 ordinary income. The remainder is 25,300. That means 25,300 of this $100,000 long-term capital gain will be taxed at 0%. The remainder of that long-term capital gain will be taxed at 15%. And that's simply because it's nowhere near this, this higher tax break, uh, break point here. So the way you run the math is you take 100,000 minus the amount of, 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 of long-term capital gains that's been taxed at 0%. And so 100,000 minus uh, 25,300 is 74,700, and that'll get taxed at 15%. So the net, the total tax on this $100,000 capital gain in this particular situation is $11,205. And if you just take a look at that on the basis of $100,000, that's about 11.2% uh, uh, average tax rate. Now, if we move on to the single taxpayer for this particular situation, we see that it's a little bit different. And the reason it's a little bit different is because since this person already has fifty thousand dollars worth of uh, of of regular ordinary income that's going to be subject to tax that already pushes that person above the first break point so that means that this hundred thousand dollars starting at at fifty thousand here is all going to be taxed at fifteen percent and again we're nowhere near the upper break point that would push him into twenty percent but the lot the similar logic applies so the way you just do this is you you you, you look at this and you say okay well the fifty thousand dollars in taxable ordinary income will displace the full zero percent uh, long-term capital gains range and then all of the 100,000 will be taxed at 15%. Therefore, the tax rate or the, the, the total taxes are $15,000, and therefore it's a 15% average tax rate. So, to conclude uh, re regarding long term capital gains, uh, first, to be a long term capital gains, you have to have held the asset for one year. And the long term capital gains tax rates are substantially lower than ordinary income tax rates. And the breakpoints are linked uh, to the graduated ordinary income tax rates, and they're also inflation adjusted. So, and the, but the key point here is the linkage between the two systems is that ordinary income uh, will push your tax rate on long-term capital gains up into higher tax brackets, even those those brackets obviously are lower. Um, and again, state taxes are 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 in addition and a little bit of a commentary. This is kind of ridiculously complex, but at least now you know how they're calculated. Now, the next video that I will do will take a specific tax forms example and work through it so you can actually see how this actually is done on the tax forms. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye.